this video came about because I wanted to show a way to associate annuities such as future value with things like the timeline. It was kind of difficult to do because in certain textbooks uh, these things don't show up. So I thought that this would make it a little easier for anyone who wishes to understand where these seemingly magical formulas come from because I don't like magical formulas any more than many of you do. So first of all, how do we get the formula for future value and what does this have to do with the timeline? It appears as though, well, if we try out the timeline calculation, which we are about to do in this video, we will get the same value as we would get from the formula for future value. That's one way of showing that, hey, they both work, but where does this formula for future value come from? And by extension, you could also extend this discussion to present value as well. The future value of an annuity. Ron invests $100 per month in an investment returning 5% interest per year compounded monthly. How much will Ron's investment be worth in six months? Now, so for that we find the interest rate per compounding period which effectively means per month. In the question, we're given the interest rate compounded per year, but we want the interest rate per month. So we have basically the annual interest rate, 5% per year, which we'll express as a decimal, divided by 12. And if we go to our trusty calculator over here, zero point zero five divided by twelve we get we can say zero point zero zero four one seven and that'll take us through uh, this calculation the only thing is when we're trying to figure out interest rate added to something it's like computing sales tax so really we have to add one to this decimal, which has the same effect as adding, um, adding the interest, uh, or sorry, it has the effect of calculating the interest and at the same time adding that interest that's calculated back to the principal amount. Each time we make an investment, each month that Ron makes an investment, he adds $100 more to his principal. So it's another principle of which a separate interest rate has to be calculated. Well, okay, so so the common ratio, which we'll call R, is going to be 1 plus this number, right? This is your, this is your interest rate. This is really 0.4 of 1%. That's a very small number. But it ends up being 1.0017. You just add 1 to this number. And you end up with the common ratio. This, this is what we call the common ratio. We multiply the, each month's $100 investment by this ratio raised to a power because, you know, over one month, uh, we'll have one month's worth of interest calculated. Two months, you'll have two months worth of interest calculated, which means it's this squared. And three months, you'll have this cubed, and so on. So we go back to our timeline. Six months is right at maturity, so we don't we don't have interest calculated there. That's right at the end. And notice that every investment will be at the end of a compounding period. There will not be an investment made on year, on years on month zero, but on month one there will be. Month two there will be. Each of the six months there will be. The idea is to find the sum of this column. Notice that the last term is 100. It's the simplest term. And uh, if we work backwards, we can call that the first term. And notice that every successive term, working backwards, is bigger than the last one by a factor of 1.00417. So we can call that the common ratio. It would also be a good idea to see what this looks like on a calculator. And now we can see the sum of the series expressed in dollars and cents 
to be six hundred and six dollars and twenty nine cents. Now, <coughs> let's check what I just did. Um, I have here for my geometric series a symbol SN. S stands for sum. N is really the number of terms to add. So when I say S6, I mean I, I wish to add six terms. And are there six terms in the addition? One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, a term is defined as basically um, numbers and products and quotients separated by plus and minus signs. At least that's how I describe it. Um, so if I, if I have S6, I really end up with the same sequence as I have here, right? These are the same, right? I add those up, I get this, and I'll end up with $606.29. Now, what if I add both, add, what if I multiply both sides by the interest rate 1.00417. That means that the 100 is multiplied by 1.00417 to make this number. This number here is multiplied by 1.00417 to make 100 times 1.00417 squared. So that means that the pattern is that every term gets converted to one term ahead of it in the previous sequence, right? Up here, you notice these are identical, and that's the way I line them up. The only one, the only terms that are different is the 100 over here, which doesn't occur in this sequence. And in the second sequence, the 100 times 1.00417 to the power 6, which actually occurs in the second sequence, but not in the first. So really what we're after is this S6 minus 1.00417 times S6. So S6 take away 1.00417 S6. Okay? So once we do that, we realize that if we... It, it sort of amounts to most of the terms disappearing because they're basically this term minus itself, and that term minus itself, and that term minus itself, all the way to the end except for the very first and the very last terms, right? So all of these, like the 100, is still surviving, but the next term subtracts out. Actually, it's more appropriate to put a minus sign there because we're subtracting. So we're subtracting 0, and over here we're subtracting another 0. Here we're subtracting another 0 because this minus this is just 0. We're subtracting another 0 here, and here we're subtracting another 0. But finally, we're adding this because there's not adding. To, sorry, we're subtracting. Seem to like adding for some reason. Um, we're subtracting this term from, well, no term exists in the thing above it. So this is like taking away from zero, which means that we end up with a negative term. 100 times 1.00417 to the power 6. Really, it's just 100 minus this term. That's really what we have. So if I give myself more room here, S6 subtract 1.00417 S6 is really equal to 100 take away 100 times 1.00417 uh, uh, to the power 6. Okay, now let's factor. I can factor S6 out of here because it's common on this side. So I get S6 outside of 1 minus 1 1.00417. And over here, 100 is common. I can factor out 100 from that. And I have 1 minus 1 times this number raised to the 6, 1.00417 raised to the 6th. Okay. Now, notice the only unknown, notice the only unknown in this calculation is S sub 6, S with the 6 on the bottom.
let's try doing this calculation on a calculator. So now we have something we can enter in a fraction. So we have 100 multiplied by, in brackets, 1, subtract 1.00417 to the power 6, close the bracket, and then go to the bottom, and I go 1 minus 1.00417. I hit equals, and I get exactly what I got before, um, $606.29. So what I've done here is I've reduced the formula to a geometric series. So really what we've been doing is we've been sneaking this on you. And when we plug in the terms, we said that we said that the first term was a, the first term is 100, and that's where we put our 100, right? So we end up with this. The common ratio is 1.00417, and that's where that goes. It goes in each of these R's, and N is just the number of terms, which is 6. Okay, so just to sort of put this side by side and put it all together, we're saying that S6 in our problem is 100 times 1 minus 1 1.00417 to the power 6 all divided by 1 minus 1.00417. And this is how we get uh, $606.29. That, that is what we calculated here uh, using our calculator. Okay, the idea is here that SN, the sum of a certain number of terms in a geometric series, is equal to the first term, right? Uh, times 1 minus the common ratio of each successive term, which we determined to be 1.00417. The first term in our problem was 100, and we divided that by 1 minus r. That's how, that's how we got here. Well, geometric series also directly applies to finance. So, Basically, what works in a geometric series as a sum of n terms also works as the future value of an investment where there's regular payments made every month or regular payments made during a compounding period. Maybe you're investing quarterly or semi-annually or whatever, but you're, you're investing in this problem. We invested every month or Ron invested every month, and this has to be multiplied by the same deal is up here, 1 minus r to the n. In this case, r is the interest rate divided by the number of months plus 1, right? So that that's how we got 1.00417. So it's 1 minus 1 1.00417 to the power n. Well, what's n? It's 6, okay? Because it's 6 terms. So, uh, 6 in, in finance terms, it's 6 compounding periods. And that's divided by 1 minus r. Once that's done, you can see that you'll actually get the same numbers, because really, these are very similar equations, where a is the first term in a geometric series. Well, this is your regular payment in an investment. And sn is the sum of six terms, whereas really that's just called the future value in finance. So uh, very, very similar. Uh, and really the future value simply comes from the sum of the geometric series.